Welcome to our creative journey. Last January, we had decided to have a workshop about colour to cheer up January 2020. If only we'd known that in January 2021, we would still need some cheering up. However, our colour workshops had to go online because of lockdown, and this is the result of the first colour quest. Uh, we looked at Albert and Harmony and Contrast, and we also looked at Rothko, particularly for mood and colour. We looked at Paul Clay, and we looked at his magic gardens, and we did really simple techniques like sprofito, which give lovely outcomes. Our next challenge was to look at the work of Matisse and without the aid of a pencil we did some drawing but this time with scissors and some of these pieces even had their own titles suggested by the outcomes. Here's some more Matisse drawing with scissors and that moved us on to expressions and masks and how mood can be shown by the use of colour. After workshops, some people just carried on using colour in their own work. The next workshop is what we called Creative Consequences. And we, we had to get something, because we were deep in lockdown at this point, that everybody had. So we used printed paper and A, A4 and black pens. And we just devised a series of workshops about making marks and patterns. We also introduced the work of other artists, in particular illustrators like uh, Kai Nielsen and Arthur Rackham and as part of the exercise we invited them to transform a portion of that artist's work and create their own little story about what else perhaps happened in that picture. I particularly love this one with the ship sailing in to the island with the, the girl on it. So I think this represents a lot of how we felt at the time, that we were on an island of our, yeah. of ourselves. We also found that although this was only fine pen and printer paper, it gave people an opportunity to sort of get inside their own heads. And some people got completely carried away and built their own galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> However, from that, our final task was to be a drawing on A4 paper and this drawing would only form the first half of that paper. That drawing would then be sent off to another member of the class who would finish it off. The constraints here were that uh, each drawing had a start and finish point on the edges so that we knew when they came together they would join up with each other. Also, the piece in the middle. Where are we? There we are. There we are. <laughs> the piece in the middle flowed from one to the other. But what was really important was the exit points at the top. Yep. So that it could flow all the way down. And the exit points at the side. So that it could flow all the way across. As a sort of a theme for this, we asked them to consider reasons to be cheerful. Because we really needed we reasons to be cheerful. Um, this particular one, I love this, because I know on a Friday evening, they would make up a different cocktail, and they called it the Locktail Cocktail Mocktail. <laughs> but also in amongst that, we had hope, we had kindness, we had nature that was about the only thing we could access because nothing else was happening. And this was all reflected in the drawings that were made and shared with each other. 
and because of the way we put constraints on it, we knew that in the end this would come together as one single piece that connected all of us. This particular piece here is a thing that we did called Inside Outside, which we actually did before Creative Consequences, and it was about responding to one another. Let's take one of the cards out the case file. Val Hamilton made this one. And this one, maybe I should describe it because yes. I know what it was about. Everyone was given a card with an aperture in it. My aperture made me think of bubbles and how we were living life in a bubble. When you opened it up, um, as a jewellery designer, of course, I had to have some wire and beads in it. So I've got precious things that are holding us all together in here. And it says down here, hold on to the precious because we're all having to hold on to whatever saw us through. And there are little bubbles of hope, I suppose, in there. The little add-on I liked from this was I had my beads from through here linking us up. When it came onto the back page, there was enough wire left over to make a little heart. This I then mailed to Anne, who was asked to respond. Um, Val, maybe you can explain what went by a response for everybody. Well, the response could have been anything. We did say to people, really think about what we thought when we first got the card. And Anne Murray Fraser at this particular point was building her own house with her, with her husband. And so she used a lot of things that were um, round about. And because of this whole idea of life being in a bubble and nature and all the rest of it, she used the sea, she used the important things in her life, which, you know, are, was house building. And all of these things have meaning, but were also to hand. And it's a beautiful piece of mosaic. Mm -hmm. I'll just let you see some of the other cards in our case. And in between times, we actually sent each other's cards that we'd made. Because there's something rather special about getting a piece of correspondence in the mail. Some more down here. And this particular card was responded to with this little painting at the back. And the response was, we saw sort of rays of sunshine and hope on the outside of Kerry's card. So Marion decided that she would have a nice sunny, natureful picture. And it says, when the dark clouds come, keep going. When the big things seem out of control, focus on what you love right under your nose. The storm will pass. This is a card that I sent to um, Miss Churchill, <laughs> Jean. <laughs> and I actually found this really hard because I was just suffering terribly from missing my, my family and in particular my grandchildren. And I'm a beekeeper and I was allowed to go and look after my bees. And fish kept kind of appearing in things, I think because they seem so free. This reminds me a bit of um, the virus and the bee swarm of bees reminds me a bit of how it progressed. So in the inside I tried to make it a bit more um, positive and there's a little kind of pink um, bit of mull there with um, Duke Castle in it and the virus is dissipating away and the fish are leaping gently and lively out of the water and I don't actually have this piece because okay, I get it. oh yes yeah. because the person Jean who made it in response to mine um, has it on her wall and as you can see it's a rainbow of bicycle forks and the shape is echoed here oh yes Sorry about that zoom, but you can see on the table the variety of responses 
and pieces that have been made and a fabulous I was going to call that a splash of colour, but it's a wave of colour, oh, isn't it? Color. Yeah, I think I think I think Catherine called this um, Hebridean seascape. Lovely. Yeah, gorgeous deep blue. Now then, where did we go, Val? I think we got into colour and weaving. We got into colour and weaving in a big way. <laughs> we started off by. Yeah. Splatter, uh, wash, and um, wax resist. resist. Wax resist. Crumpled tissue. What Anything else? else? I can't really remember, but lots of different yeah. techniques. Yep. Um, as a kind of uh, joining, as a kind of link, I was introducing some weaving into this because it's quite a good way to pair things together. And as one of our starter practices, some of us took our Zen tangles and our drawings and then wove colour through them. So you have a lovely mix of monochrome and colour. And in order to understand how colours work against each other, whether har harmoniously or contrasting, weaving again is quite a good medium for doing that. So we've got some fairly cool weavings there and we've got hotter ones down at the bottom. And of course, with no shops open, it's amazing what you can find to weave with. Colour magazines have got some wonderful printed pages in them that we could then experiment. However, on our doorstep, we have the artist Joe Lobo, John Larry Morrison, and I happen to have quite a lot of his catalogues because I'm one of his biggest fans. And he's also, I suppose, a modern day Scottish colourist. So a good one for studying his use of colour. And also a really nice man that doesn't mind us cutting up his artwork. Indeed. <laughs> Absolutely. So we used these and used the technique of weaving to consider how colour works one with another. Yeah, and then we moved on to looking, or we kind of did it in parallel, didn't we? We were yes. weaving, and some people got really into the weaving, yeah. not me, <laughs> drove me nuts. <laughs> and um, then we started thinking of how to put things together more compositionally. And that was when we started using the idea of a square. And using things that are very ge geometric so that they were truly abstract but because and probably we, where we live some non-abstract things kind of crept in and quite a lot of things started to look quite like landscape it was about this time that we started to introduce more formal ideas yeah. of composition. This is maybe my fault, this is the kind of designerly edge of it and we were thinking about shape filling and how you actually fill a shape and how the viewer can then travel around that composition in a way that perhaps provokes, perhaps comforts maybe just gives them a nice wee trip around some colour and we had of course we did we had a wee theory and a wee measurement for that and that's my phone just going off but we'll just ignore that more space filling this time edges and geometry and again we were looking at squares within squares and how things would fit and where they're best placed. When it got a wee bit looser, we began tearing instead of cutting. And of course, we can't help but uh, reflect the on the landscape that we're round about. But you can see how everyone is really beginning to enjoy their colour and to understand how to get the effect they want through their colour use. I'm going to just bring us back over to a special corner via a little bit of colour theory weaving, where we used Jolomo's work 
and we discovered the colours within it. Again, one of our little formulas where we had cool vertical marks and warm horizontal marks that would tie everyone's work together. Again, we're very much aware in times of isolation that we also wanted connection. However, I'll bring us over back to uh, this corner here. First of all, let's feast our eyes on the beautiful work in front of us here. A whole portfolio of work by one of our group, Marlon, whom sadly we lost to a fatal illness last week, just as we were setting up the exhibition. Marlon is a trained weaver and her response to this card that she received from Jude was to discover her comfort zone and in, in the little card there's a little funny emoticon with a little mask on his face of course and uh, Marlon just said the moment I received Jude's card I was struck by the detail on the face a multicoloured log cabin pattern. So I'm in the process of weaving a length in a log cabin variation. And here it is. Do you want to pick it up? Oh, let's yeah. see. It is the most beautiful, really beautiful piece of fabric. Absolutely lovely. Look at the colours in that. And Marilyn's card that she sent is really beautiful and she sent a little explanation with it too yeah she received a card with this egg shape on it she responded to it with um landscape and inside we have this and what she said was hi sharon sorry to be a bit late even in lockdown if it is busy just a brief explanation front I can't Schematic that. watercolour wash with egg shaped aperture equals Easter weekend. A washout for going out. Nothing on the sea, beach, etc. And then inside, saw lots of guillemots, black and white message. And then the inside page, cuckoo, guess who? Grey, turfing out of nests. And on the back cover, um, now Marlon was someone who loved to go out walking and out in the hills. She was always out and about. But the back cover, she says, is the phrase of the times. The roadmap. There was a roadmap out of whatever problems we were having that were being forced to take a roadmap. Hope we all get going sometime. Hope we all get going to some level soon. Best, Best wishes, wishes, Marlon. Just a beautiful... Um, compilation of work and we've dedicated a little um, log of our journey to Marlon this year. Let's go back to our final colour pieces. Uh, shall we look at these ones Val? Yep. This is our second last sheet. This is where we looked at space filling, atmosphere, colour and mood. And then when we started to get strict, <laughs> I thought we've got to get this to work together. So we came up with the 21, 12, 7, 21. Which is the short edge of an A4. Uh, yeah, so it's A4 squared and then 12, right, which is the size of this square, and then 7, which is the size of the little strips. And we decided to have glow colours going up the way and warm colours going across the way. So this is some of the things that people made. All of the work we have has been people's journey. It's not necessarily finished artworks. So some of it might appear sketchy and experimental, but that was the whole point of it. And then, now and again, we just absolutely hit the mark and it all works. I think these are, these are beautiful. And they bring together some of the techniques we've used because there are cut pieces of paper overlaid. There are the strips that perhaps were earlier used for weaving and then they've all been composed and brought together in such a beautiful way. 
which then brings us to a very final piece. Our final colour connection piece. Wow. <laughs> it leaves us speechless and that takes quite a lot to leave us speechless. <laughs> but I think if we journey through them all, you can see the theory, the 21127 constraint is right there. The vertical cools are there. The horizontal warms are there. The different ways of using media, whether it's collaging, painting, using a coloured pencils. Um, I can tell you that some of these have gone through about 10 different iterations before getting to the final one, because sometimes the most difficult thing to decide was, what's my background colour going to be? <laughs> because one thing affects another and gives you a whole different reading. Also, when it came to putting this together, Sometimes we didn't know which way was up. <laughs> I'll just let you enjoy all of these. And I'll pan out in a moment. But I hope you'd agree that these could each stand alone. as their own piece. Or if we zoom out, the whole thing, you then get what I would call the wow factor. So I think on the wow factor note, we'll leave you. We shall leave you with the wow. Bye.